Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a requested video, which is a rundown of the Calvin Klein Euphoria range of perfumes. If you're new here, then welcome to my little piece of the internet where it's all about perfumes. If you're a perfume fan like me, then do subscribe. I have new videos every week. And if you're already a subscriber, let me know any requests you have down in the comments and I will try and do a video on them. So let's get into the perfume. So Euphoria is a fragrance that's been around for quite a long time. 2005 was when the original came out. So this is a well-established perfume. It's not one of those perfumes that you see in the sort of top, top, top bestsellers. Um, but it's something that's just always been around and I know that people that wear this tend to like swear by it and it becomes their signature scent um, and sometimes it is quite recognisable on other people. Um, I'd say overall I find that um, the Eau de Parfums in this range are quite good for lasting compared to most um, like typical mainstream perfume. I think it's probably my favourite from Calvin Klein. One thing to note is that because these fragrances have been around for a while, you can usually get them at really good um, discounted prices. And as always, links will be down below to where you can get them at good prices in UK and US. So let's get into it. So the way I would describe the original Eau de Parfum um, is that it is a scent in its own right. Some fragrances you can smell the different parts of them, um, but with Euphoria for me they all blend and they become a scent in, their, in themselves. It just smells like Euphoria. Um, but basically what this has in it is it has amber, it has musk and it has wood. And I think those three things mix together and create a sort of a warm, um, floridiness with the flowers in it um, and help it last because wood, amber and musk all ingredients that are really good for lasting. So you've got a little bit of violet flower in here and some orchid flower as well which that's what mixes and makes that muskiness but there's also like a cranberry um, but I wouldn't describe this as a sweet or fruity perfume. For me the cranberry mixes with that sort of lotusy fresh floral smell to create you know how uh, if you think of a lotus flower it's even though it's floral it's like a sweet floral i think the cranberry complements and mixes with the wood and stuff there's also a bit of patchouli and a bit of vanilla in also two very good for lasting ingredients it's basically like they just sat down and gone okay what's all the really good ingredients that help a perfume last and they put them all in euphoria so that's, I think, why it, it does stay on the skin. It's one of those things that stays on clothes really well. I'd recommend spraying this on clothes, on your hair, because it really, it, it, it does last. And so it's quite good value for money in that respect. There's also an Eau de Toilette version of the original. Now this is much lighter as you'd expect from an Eau de Toilette. This is not gonna last that long. It doesn't have musk in, it doesn't have vanilla in, it doesn't have that woody note in. Um, it's got some sandalwood, um, which is different. Um, and it's really hyped up the floral side of things. So perhaps you could use this to top up during the day or if you feel like original euphoria is a bit too much for when you're um, on holiday or when it's hot, then you could use a, the Eau de Toilette instead. But it's basically like a simple lotus flower, orchidy, greener version of the original. So next we have Euphoria Blossom. Now this is actually, um, I'd say a little bit misleading in the, in the name. So it does have the lotus flowers back, the orchids back, and they've also added a load of peony, um, which is one of my favorite floral fragrance notes. It's a very fresh um, kind of smell. Like peonies, yes, they're floral, but they're almost like a watery floral. That pomegranate is back from the original. I think I said red berries, sorry, I meant pomegranate. Um, the pomegranate's back from the original with kumquat as well. And this makes blossom, I'd say like a sweeter blossom. So it isn't like super floral in the way that you'd expect something called blossom to be. It's like a sweet floral. But what it does have, it does have the musk, the wood and the amber back again. I'd say compared to the original, this is perhaps a bit safer. If you wanted to get this as a gift for someone, then this is definitely um, a bit more 
typical mainstream and not quite as strong as the original. We then have Forbidden Euphoria, which is really all about the raspberry. But even though, it, yes, it does has that sweetness of a raspberry, the musky elements really amped up here because they put like a cashmere-iness in here. And mixed with patchouli, orchid, blossomy type notes, this makes it, yes, sweet, but a musky, pretty sweet. So don't be scared off by the raspberry. This isn't a super sweet fragrance. It, this is almost along the sort of flower bomb type lines, but like a sweeter flower bomb. And you can smell the patchouli in this. So the patchouli comes into its own after about, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. You can smell it. So one for patchouli fans. Next, we have Euphoria Gold, departing from their typical um, purpley pink colours. Um, gold has honey in as the main note. So this is like a warm sweetness, but also a warm fruitiness with apricot, kumquat, um, an orangey, like a sort of crystallised orange. And that's all complemented by a little bit of white floral and patchouli and musk. So I'd say this is quite good for lasting. Musk and patchouli really help a fragrance last. Um, but this has that honey element in. So if you like uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal, I'd say that's quite similar. Another honey perfume. Um, but yeah, this is definitely warm. I'd wear this perhaps in the autumn. You know, I find honey, even though it's sweet, is a warmness. It's not really a summer warm. Next we have Endless Euphoria. Now this has got rose as one of the main notes. And mixed with the violet from the original Euphoria, this is probably one of the most florally of all of them. It also has cherry blossom and bamboo. But I think the rose and perhaps the cherry blossom are the dominant notes. It is probably the most floral. I'd say mixing with the violet and the woodiness has an almost traditional element to it. So if you want like a classic floral scent, then Endless Euphoria is that. I think definitely good for daytime, nighttime. You know, it's more about do you like florals? Do you like rose? And this is not really a fresh rose, I'd say. Even though in the like the first few minutes you get um, a citrusy bergamontiness, as it settles down, it becomes more of a classic rose smell. So I'd say of all of them, this is probably the most classic smell. Next we have Euphoria Essence. Now this is blackberry and raspberry. I love blackberry perfume, so this might be one of my favourites, I think, in the range. It also has white chocolate in, patchouli, orchid, and a sort of cashmere element to it with some white florals. But it really is the blackberry and raspberries are the star of the show with that classic Euphoria orchidness to it. And then the white chocolate off, obviously adding a bit of a warm sweetness. It almost is like a sour or boozy um, blackberry and raspberry rather than a sort of fresh summer. So this is definitely more autumn winter fragrance in my opinion. It's it's that fruitiness, like it's probably the most fruity in the range. And I know that this is one that does have people that keep buying it again and again. You know, some flankers are just a bit like, you know, meh. Um, whereas this one almost is a perfume in its own right. People that like that that sour blackberry raspberry um, get this, um, just like they get the original Eau de Parfum. So next up we have Deep Euphoria, which came out um, a bit more recently with Margot Robbie as the face of the fragrance, who I love. This has got your woody musky undertones of the original, but rose and patchouli really come through, but I'd say in a more modern way than with Endless Euphoria. Um, that rose and patchouli is something that's in Miss Dior. So this is of a, of a similar vein to Miss Dior, um, which is probably why I like it. Um, this is quite similar, I guess, to original Euphoria in that all the fragrance notes kind of mix together, but I'd say it's a little bit more um, sort of prettier, I guess, with that rose, whereas the original Euphoria is more like quite strong and empowering scent I'd say. This is like a little bit more prettier. I think it would mix well actually if you have both you could wear them together. The only thing to say is it does have um like a white pepper note in which for some people on their skin it, it in the dry down it becomes peppery um but not on everyone. So I guess it just varies but yeah I think this is really nice very modern and um, pretty but still 
okay for lasting not as good as original euphoria but still okay it also comes in an eau de toilette version which is much lighter and quite different so it's water lily and pear so both of those things are quite watery aquatic-y type notes and then you've got a musky rose and a little bit of the wood so it does still smell like you a euphoria scent but really much fresher you'd wear this on a really hot day and um, that sort of water lily you know feels very tropical and fresh and i think pear is more like a fresh scent than a fruity scent you know if you think of a pear it's mainly water um so it's quite sort of calming vibes i'd say and then finally we have a brand new release which is euphoria blush which i guess has come out for christmas 2019 um this it has the blackberry and raspberry back again yay um but it also has a chocolate note in it so um and that's an original chocolate not a white chocolate like is in some of the others you've got your rose you've got your orchid you've got your amber you've got your wood so very similar to original um but with those three <clears throat> but with those fruity vibes and that chocolate I think chocolate is very much an autumn winter fragrance note so I think this is like a sweeter chocolatey version of the original um so good for Christmas so if you like the original I'd say try this as it's new and exciting as well <laughs> so that's it guys let me know what you think of the euphoria range do you wear any of them have you tried them um let me know in the comments down below and give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful of course but that's it guys so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you again real soon bye